King of Trees. In our last story, we witnessed the rise of an unlikely hero, Gideon. With the bravery of God, Gideon led Israel's people into victory over the Midianites with only 300 men. Peace reigned in the land for over 40 years. In this story, we will learn about Abimelech, son of Gideon. Abimelech's ambition clouded his judgment and conscience. He became evil and killed his siblings in the pursuit of power. Hello, this is Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our previous episode, we saw how God used an Israelite army of only 300 to fight against a great army of Midianites and to defeat them, proving that God, not their own strength, or their own power, or military might, but God himself gives great victory. This was a miracle from the hand of God. In the midst of this great victory, God's name was glorified and peace was restored to the people. So in today's reading, we learn how Gideon rightly refuses the people's request for him to be their king, as he reminds them that God is the only king of his people. But we're also going to see tragedy at the end of this story as one of Gideon's sons, Abimelech, will allow selfish ambition to creep into his heart, which leads to betrayal and murder. So, listen now to today's reading. With all good things, evil lurks around the corner seeking to destroy it. Like the serpent in the Garden of Eden, ambition and lust for power lies dormant, waiting to strike. Gideon judged over the Israelite people for forty years, and there was peace across the land. They begged him to be king over them, yet he refused, saying, Neither I nor my children will be rulers over you. God alone is your king. Gideon was a righteous and good man, yet even he struggled with his own darkness. For all his righteousness, Gideon was gripped by an unquenchable lust. He had many wives and concubines and bore many children. Over seventy sons were accounted to him. When Gideon passed away at an old age, his choice to sow his seed too far would end up hurting the people of Israel. Abimelech was the bastard son of Gideon, born from one of his concubines. He had more passion, zeal, and ambition than all sixty-nine of his other brothers. Yet he had a sinister spirit about him. He lusted after a throne to sit upon. He sowed seeds of deception among his mother's people in Shechem. Which is better, Abimelech began to inquire, that seventy sons bicker and fight among one another and rule you, or that one strong king rules over you? The people agreed that only one person should lead, and they paid Abimelech to be their king. A sly grin came across Abimelech's face as they tossed silver into the chalice in front of him. They hailed him as king and took up arms to the other sons of Gideon. Abimelech rode in violently with his band of crazed followers behind him. They stormed the town of Afra, where the other sons of Gideon dwelled. Torches lit up the town streets as the men raided and killed every brother in sight. Abimelech stabbed, slashed, and strangled his half-brothers. With every death, Abimelech was closer to becoming the king of Israel. The youngest son of Gideon, Jotham, woke up in a panic. The cruel laughter of Abimelech and his followers echoed across the town. He heard them approaching and hid himself underneath some straw. He held his breath, watching the boots pass by him. He waited there until it was silent. Jotham arose from his hiding place and snuck to the outskirts of town. He hid in the bushes near the great oak pillar. There, Shechem and his followers celebrated. The heads of the other brothers were tossed into the fire. Jotham turned white and did not move. There they placed a crown on Shechem's head and made him king. Jotham did not know his father well, since he was the youngest, but he did know that Gideon refused to be king several times out of respect for God and the people of Israel. Righteous anger built up inside him. Jotham, in a moment of pure indignation, arose from his hiding place and planted himself firmly on top of a small mount for everyone to see. The people were silent. Jotham stared at them, 
waiting for the right words to come to him. Listen to me, Jotham shouted. Listen, followers of Shechem. Listen to me so that you may not perish. The trees were once in need of a king. They grumbled and complained for someone to rule over them. They went to the olive tree and said, Rule over us. But the olive tree was too blessed and filled with abundance to leave and rule. So they went to the fig tree, yet it would not leave its sweetness and good fruit. Then the trees went to the vine and asked if it would be king of trees. But the vine yielded wine and was too busy entertaining people to rule as their king. So the trees went to the thorn bush, and the thorn bush gladly accepted. Yet it said in its cruelty, Come take refuge in my shade, and if you do not, let fire come out of my thorns and devour all the trees of the land. The people listened to Jotham in silence. Jotham yelled passionately, and Abimelech brooded in silence, not wanting to make a scene and lose the people's trust. Jotham continued, saying, My father risked his life for you, and you repay him by slaughtering his sons, and now you make the son of his concubine your king? If you have done so with integrity, fine, you shall have your reward. But if you have not, you all shall burn with him as your king." The Bimelech could take no more of Jotham's rambling. He called for the men to seize him. They pursued him with swords and ropes. Jotham dodged them and tumbled down the hill he was standing on. He escaped their grasp and fled to Beer to hide. Three dark years had passed. Abimelech ruled as a tyrant, not a king, and the people of Shechem began to resent him for his cruel nature. The men of Shechem sought to sabotage Abimelech by robbing the trade routes. In spite, they choked out Abimelech's wealth. A man named Gal entered into the land. He was a friendly, entertaining, and persuasive man. The people of Shechem enjoyed his company and hung on every word he said. They would get drunk and host parties all night long and reviled their king Abimelech. They would sing, dance, and make fun of their tyrant. As they danced and drank, they would boast of what they would do to Abimelech if given the chance. Zibal, the governor of the city, sent word to Abimelech of Gaul's influence on the people. Together they devised a plan to ambush the city and invoke their wrath upon their insolent servants. Abimelech marched his army at night towards Shechem. As the sun rose, they ambushed the city. The rising sun was at their backs, and the bright lights cast a shadow in front of them. Gaul woke up in a hungover daze. He looked into the horizon and saw hundreds of men on horseback coming towards them. Gaul ran to Zibal, the governor, and said, People are coming from the mountains. Zibal brushed him off and said, You're drunk still. Those are just shadows. Zibal broke a smile, looking forward to what would happen next. Gaul kept looking and said, No, 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 look, people are coming to attack us. Gaul panicked and shook Zibal to do something and protect them. Zibal grinned and pushed Gaul to the floor. Where is that sharp mouth of yours now? Aren't you the one who said you could easily defeat Abimelech? Look, now is your chance. Gaul went to go fetch his relatives and the rest of the men. Unfortunately, they had all been drunk the night before. They sloppily rose up to fight and were easily taken over. Shechem showed no mercy. He wounded many. Limbs lied near the gates of the city like driftwood on the shore. The next day, the warriors of Shechem went to ambush Abimelech and take him by surprise. Abimelech divided his people into three companies to surround the incoming insurgents. They crumbled like breadcrumbs underneath his fist. Abimelech was not yet satisfied. He had his army surround the city, and one by one, Abimelech and his men began to slaughter the women, elderly, and children, too. Innocent screams scratched against the ears of God as Abimelech painted the city in blood and ash. Some were able to retreat to the tower. Abimelech rode towards the tower and looked up. He could see their frightened eyes peering through the windows. Abimelech dismounted his horse and picked up an axe nearby. He swung it around, whistling as he nonchalantly paced the base of the tower. 
He then took the axe and swung at some nearby brushwood. Ah! The people looked down at him, trembling and screaming for help. Abimelech did not hear their screams. He hummed and whistled, enjoying every second of his bloodlust. He stacked the brushwood against the tower and started a fire at the base. The sun began to set and the fire began to rise. Screams of fear turned into screams of pain. Over a thousand men, women, and children melted into the stone and the tower crumbled to the ground. Abimelech loved the pain he had caused. He couldn't get enough of it. He was hungry for more power and to invoke fear upon his servants. He took his army to Thebes and camped there. Early in the morning he rose against them to capture the city and burn it to the ground. The men of the city fought to hold him back, but could not. They fled to the tower, which was much larger and more fortified than the one in Shechem. Abimelech cut his way through soldiers. One by one they fell at his feet as he sliced through them. He was bloodthirsty and could not wait to watch the tower burn. Abimelech drew closer to the tower. He looked up, eyes red with the sleeplessness of war. A woman met his gaze from up above the tower. In a moment that seemed too anticlimactic to be real, she shoved one of the millstones off the side of the tower and crushed Abimelech's head. The tyrant lie there motionless. He was dying slowly, painfully, and alone. A servant boy passed by his body. You there, Abimelech said, coughing up blood. Kill me, take my sword, and kill me, lest they say I was crushed by a woman. Even near death, Abimelech was filled with pride. The boy took the blade and thrust it through Abimelech's heart. The tyrant king of Israel breathed his last. God righted the wrongs of Abimelech and brought a curse upon those who made him king. The Israelite people were so quick to seek out a king for themselves that they did not start to think of the king's heart. The people of Israel would still seek after a king, and they would fail again. But God would choose for himself a king unlike any other. A king that shared the faith of his past heroes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. A king that, although flawed, sought after the heart of God. Today's story begins with Gideon as the judge over Israel, a deliverer, a powerful leader. As we've come to expect by now, this too would be a short-lived peace for Israel. But before the bad news, we heard how Gideon responded to the people's call for him to be their king. When the people approached him and asked him to rule over them, he refused, saying, that's not my place. Only God can rule this nation. Listen to what is written in Judges 8.23. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. He understood that it was not God's will for them to be like the other nations around them. Their king was God, who is the only good and perfect ruler of all people. When we choose God to rule in our lives and allow him to take his rightful place of preeminence, we also know his power and his presence. He is the perfect king and Lord. But Gideon was a complicated character. He had a number of failures and failings, and one of those was his desire for many women. God's design has always been for one man and one woman. That was the very beginning and the promise and the principle that God established. One man, one woman committed to each other. Gideon, however, did as so many men did in his own day. He took many wives and many concubines. Gideon, therefore, had 70 sons with many women. And when he passed away, a son of one of his concubines saw an opportunity to seize power. His name was Abimelech. Abimelech used clever tactics to trick the rulers of Shechem into following him, but his heart was very evil, and when evil takes power, you can expect more and more evil to follow. So with his army of followers, Abimelech went to his father's house and ruthlessly killed his brothers. All but one of the 69 sons are put to death by Abimelech. The only one to survive was Gideon's youngest son, Jotham. Jotham stood before the people and spoke in a parable about trees, explaining that if they appointed Abimelech in good faith, then they would have peace. But if not, 
They would experience pain like a fire that consumes. Jotham then fled to safety, and Abimelech ruled for three devastating years. The people's foolishness to follow Abimelech, who was evil, led to unspeakable horrors as none were spared this tyrant's wrath. Young and old, men and women were killed by the king and his men. It was now too late for the people to realize their terrible mistake, and they discovered that once evil is given power, it is very hard to take it away. But God moved on behalf of his people. And Abimelech was unceremoniously defeated by a woman who threw a stone onto his head. His pride persisted to his last breath, though, as he asked a passing young man to kill him with a sword so that he wouldn't be killed at the hands of a woman. Today's reading reminds us that choices matter. The choices you make today have consequences in your life and in the lives of your family. The people would still search for a king, and God was going to give them one, who, despite his failings, would have God's heart like no other. Dear God, help us to make choices that honor you and that obey your word. May we live by your truth and give us strength and courage to allow you to be the Lord and King of our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. If you want to know more about the Lord, how to know Him, how to serve Him, and be His disciple, then let me encourage you to visit my website, which is jackgraham.org. We would love to assist you in any way possible as you grow in your journey of faith. Again, that's jackgraham.org. God bless you.